Hypothetical question for you. Have you ever seen a group of trees going for a swim? Or gazelles that do, uh, this? Or a, um, you know, one of those? If you find these images baffling, you're not alone. This is Codex Seraphinianus, one of the most unusual books ever written. Originally published in 1981, it's not an easy book to track down. Written by surreal artist Luigi Serafini, the book is designed to be completely alien to anyone who picks it up. The world of impossibilities within, at first, doesn't seem to follow any logic. Not only are the images utterly mind-bending, but it's written in a made-up and thoroughly untranslatable language. And yet, the more you read, the more you might find a strange sense of continuity among the images. That's because Serafini intended this book to be an encyclopedia. An encyclopedia of a world that doesn't exist. So for this entry into the archive, I'm going to do my best to document the alternate dimension Serafini created. Bearing in mind, the codex is, by design, meant to be untranslatable. So let's get started. Like a real encyclopedia, the book is divided into sections. The first one seems to be on plants, and they certainly aren't any kind we'd recognize. One page displays alien fruits and vegetables, some of which seem to be hybrids of more familiar produce you might find in a grocery store in our world, or hybrids of produce and inanimate objects. Oh, and watch out for trees in this realm. It seems they tend to run away. Continuing our psychedelic tour, the next section is on animals. We've got some very unusual species of birds, some fish which look like watchful eyes peering out at you, and uh, this guy who seems to burrow underground. The codex also goes into microorganisms, tiny species which are impossible to categorize, and seem to emerge from a gigantic rainbow. We're just gonna have to roll with that one. The next section is on legs. Just pairs of legs, with peculiar objects emerging from where the torso should be. And it seems like there's a lot of them in this alternate dimension. Sometimes the legs walk in the park. Sometimes the legs walk in the street. Look, I'm not going to pretend I understand this section, but there's something about it I do find strangely hilarious. The next section is also difficult to categorize, but seems to dive into the world of chemistry and, fascinatingly, subatomic particles. Within these pages, you can find rows and rows of molecules which feel so scientific. Of course, like the rest of the book, all this is made up. But there's something about going all the way down to the atomic level that makes this fictional realm feel strangely real. Next, we have a short section on vehicles, like this car made out of flies and white goo, or this other vehicle made out of something, or this cloud-shaped vehicle, which in another section can be seen making rainbows, although it seems to mess them up on occasion. Continuing on, the next, and by far the largest section, is on the people who inhabit this world or as close to people as this world seems to get. And I will say, the people of this alternate dimension do seem to know how to throw a party, whether it be doing, well, this, or doing this. Honestly, with most of these, your guess is as good as mine. And the final few sections are just completely incomprehensible. I feel like Serafini wanted to make sure no overthinkers, like me, would ever be able to puzzle this world out completely, so he filled the ending with stuff that would take centuries to understand. And with a final page which seems like a back of book glossary, although it's impossible to translate, we've reached the end of the Codex. So stepping back from all this madness, what is Serafini trying to get at with showing us this glimpse into another world? Well, as trippy and somewhat unsettling as some of these images are, there's also a strange sense of beauty to the drawings, and an enthralling feeling of genuine mystery. In the end, I think Codex Serafinianus captures a feeling. The experience of reading it reminds me of being young and flipping through an encyclopedia, staring at pictures and not comprehending the words, but feeling a strange, untranslatable world hovering just outside my understanding. So maybe it's okay that we can't puzzle out Serafini's one-of-a-kind masterwork. Maybe some things are best if left truly unexplicable. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support and like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious.
See you in the next video.